Hey Maulers, Engineer Jeff here, and in this tutorial we're going to be painting a Reaper Bones Cave Troll. This guy right here. So let's get started. Okay, so one of the things I like to do when I'm painting my models is I'll prime them black and then I'll dust it with a white um, just coming in from the top. Um, inevitably when I do this I will find mold lines and I'm not sure if you can see it from here so I'll zoom in. See that little bit of nastiness right there? So we're gonna make that go away and the way I do it, you're going you're gonna to find these on almost all these Reaper Bones models. They've got some kind of mold line someplace. So if you don't mind it, don't sweat it. I mean, just go ahead and paint it like you normally do. But that line is going to drive me nuts. So what I'm doing here is, let me zoom this back out is uh, this is a, um, a sanding stick and I think Tamiya makes them. I will put a link in the description field down below. But I found that these things are awesome for removing mold lines on this type of plastic. So I'll just kind of see if I can get in there and trying to do it without removing all the detail Maybe I'll get a newer one. It's not all bugged up. Here, that's a new one. Um, again, I'm using Steinal Res Primer to put that primer coat down. And then areas that you really have to get in there. I'm going to take him off of that. I'll just take the uh, hobby knife and just get in there and get that line gone, that mold line. It's not going to be like super perfect, but it'll be enough that it's not going to drive me crazy that I didn't see it and I just went ahead and painted over it. You don't have to do this. Just, I guess if I'm OCD about anything, this is one of them. Just got to get you gone, mold line. Oh, there goes the compressor. For those of you who have watched my Badger 910 compressor review, that's how loud it is. And it's not bad. It runs every so often, tops off the tank. I just used um, my airbrush to prime these with uh, this guy with uh, Steinal Res. Supposedly, Steinal Res uh, or uh, Badger's got some new colors coming out for their primer. They've got a, an orange, and they, they came out with some other colors last year for their primer line for Steinal Res. But uh, I saw on Facebook where Ken made an announcement that they were, you know, they had some blues and other different colors like green colors I think some of that the model the like military modeling community was asking for so kudos to that company for listening to their their customer base if we could just get GW to do that right so we got the mold line removed it took a little bit of scraping and I'm just gonna go back over and Prime this and we'll get started. Okay, so the mold line has been removed. And it's kind of hard to tell in this lighting, but um, you can see where I reproduced the shading that I had before with 
by priming it in black and then dusting it in white. And for the most part, there's a couple spots where you can still see the mold line, but I'm really not going to sweat it. Um, so the, for those of you who are curious, this is a cap to a spray can, a rattle can. And what I've done is I've drilled a couple holes in it. And as you can see, our troll here has some pins in the feet. Now, if you watched the previous video uh, where I made the base, you know that I basically drilled those holes in the bottom of his feet and put the pins in there so that he'll be able to mount. He'll be able to um, stand without you know falling off of the base, the custom base that I made him. And what I did was I took a little bit of blue poster tack. It's sticky and it keeps him from wobbling around. So I just put him in there and, and now I have something that's you know a little larger to hold on to uh, while I paint him instead of just you know grabbing him here and there and there keeps me from getting my mitts all over the the model basically what we're gonna do here is take the Vallejo model air UK Azure it's a uh, it's basically a like a a light blue it's got a little bit of gray to it um, and we're gonna dust this model just like we did when we were um, priming it except um, I'm not going to obscure all the shading that I did that I've got here from when I did the dusting so I'll go ahead and spray it and you'll see what I'm talking about loading up the handy dandy Badger 105 Patriot make sure you're wearing your respirator alright he's all primed up He's base coated and we're ready to start the first thing. And the super compressor comes on. So let's make something perfectly clear. We're painting a troll. A fantasy creature. So you don't have to necessarily paint them the same color that I'm painting this one. If in your world there's paint trolls go nuts if in your world the troll lives in a um, in a lava environment or you know or, or paint them green paint them um, whatever color you think the troll is um, but most importantly have fun with it dig dig so basically we're going to do is we're going to take some leviathan purple um, it's it's a purple wash that citadel makes i don't know what the new version of it is this is the old name um, and we're just gonna wash the troll with give it a good coat you're gonna say purple jeff what are you talking about dude why are you put, giving him a purple wash? Well, you'll see. And then once you got that on there, you just kind of kind of go over and on the raised areas. Make sure you don't get into the cracks. You just want to just lightly go over the raised surfaces there. So this is almost like a dry brush. So this is what you've got after the wash dries. Lots more muscles. We'll go back in with that light blue that we had before. And I'm just going to bring some of that back out on the raised edges. Not going too crazy here. Just want to get our original color back. Leaving purple in the areas where shadows would be falling normally. 
And if you mess up, don't sweat it. You can always go back in later, touch it up. I'm not really concerned about my brush tip right here. You can tell it's kind of kind of flayed out. There's not a lot of point to it. It's almost this is like a almost like a controlled dry brush. If you want to look at it like that. Paint control butt. Trying to bring that color back out. I'm really trying to ramp up my progress with getting all these Reaper bones painted. Uh, the um, Kickstarter the Reaper bones Kickstarter is coming supposed to be released here fairly soon. I thought I saw some communication from Reaper here recently that uh, most of the models were on their way from China. So I've got a lot more bones coming and I barely made a dent in the um, Reaper Bones 1 stuff that I've got or any of the other models that I picked up from my local gaming shop. So kind of got to get on the ball. Otherwise, I'll be painting this stuff when I'm 60. Maybe that won't be a bad thing to do. So once you get all your uh, original color back on, you get something a little like that. So what I'm going to do here while we're at this stage is I'm going to go ahead and use this uh, Nolan oil and put it on the hair. We're probably going to make a couple coats, so going to be careful just to get it where the hair is nowhere else this means you're not going to want to load your brush up it's kind of difficult to see right now especially with the lighting but uh, as that dries we'll do another coat and you'll start to see a little better his hair will start coming out while we're waiting on that to dry we're going to go ahead and uh, break out some of the P3 Hammerfall khaki um, it's just a light brown color it's got kind of a uh, I don't know, it's khaki color so if you've got a comparable color on your other line or whatever paint you're using go for it we're going to paint the loincloth Careful, and there's also almost like a, it's like a drawstring or something. It's basically his belt that goes around, holding his drawls up. His underoos, the stuff protecting his niggly bits or covering his niggly bits tune in to engineer Jeff while he talks about troll junk if you want to while you're at it you can use that same color to paint the claws and his toes the toenails. And if you remember, I cut this guy's toes off when I was removing him from the base that he came with on the Reaper bones. So, he 
He's only got a couple toenails. And we'll go ahead and paint some teeth the same color. Got some proper teeth. And that, he's got these little nodules with these bumps on him. So I'm actually going to paint them the same color. I'm going to use this, this rucksack, or this uh, hammerfall khaki. You know, I guess, I don't know what these are. You know, like troll zits. Who knows. You got, it almost looks like his spine or something sticking out. I'm getting those with the same color. It. What do you guys suppose these things are? These nodules growing off of him. Should get something about like that when you're done. So I'm one of the few people on the planet I'm pretty sure that still has valid uh, working washes of Devlin mud. Um, the new version of this, I think it's called Agra Agrax Earthshade. So uh, we're going to use that to wash the um, loincloth, which probably hasn't been washed in forever. Do trolls do laundry? Be careful not to get any. Get it into all the crevices. Crevas. So after everything's dry, getting a little something like that. Um, I actually went back in and did a second um, wash after I had done the first one. Uh, Try to deepen those shadows up a little bit because it just wasn't covering like I wanted it to. And what you can do is go in with your Agrax Earth Shade or Devlin Mud and just go over that spine. And just try to, to bring that out a little bit. I want that to be a little more defined. Makes them pop a little better. Also went in and did another coat of uh, Nuln oil on the hair. So what we'll do here is we'll go in with a hammer fall khaki and we'll highlight up the loin cloth again. Just in some of the raised areas. Just give it some points of interest. Get a little something like that. And then what we'll do is we're going to take this filet of bone white and we'll highlight up a little more that hammerfall khaki. And while we're at it, we'll go ahead and do the uh, claws and the little. I'm going to call them troll zits. Just the top. Just the tips. Apparently it 
it's time for the dishwasher to be running. Tops of the teeth. I missed a tooth there. I'll take the time to um, just touch this spine or whatever it is, this bony growth he's got going up the top, uh, middle of his back. Just kind of get it to pop out a little bit more after that wash. Something like that. So what we'll do is um, take our original color and we'll um, mix some of the bone white into that and we're going to highlight some of the muscles up. And I'm going to switch out my battery. Basically what we're doing is we're just highlighting everything that had the original blue color where maybe light would fall. We're not totally going over it. I mean we're not like, like going ballistic and covering all of our shadows up but just hitting the edges. And it's going to look a little extreme in spots but that's fine because as we move through this to another stage, we'll be fixing that and all will become clear. Let me know if you guys are digging the new lighting. I've got a daylight bulb up above me now, this new one, and uh, just as long as it doesn't wash things out, this is a, a difficult color to get to show up on camera. We'll end up something a little like that. A little more vibrant color. And we'll actually go back. Need even a little more highlighting. So I take some of the bone color and I'm going to mix it in with my previous mixture I'm just getting some of the areas that I really want to highlight up the tip of the nose and the rib cage there so that's what we got so far So what we're going to do at this point, and this is going to kind of tie everything in, I'm going to take a couple drops of this magic blue and a couple drops of our base color, and then I'm going to create a glaze out of it. And basically you're just watering it down. Basically you're making a, a blue color that's going to tie all this contrast in a little bit. It's just going to tone it down some. And you really want it to be very runny um, that's about right I'm gonna dip the brush in there it's a little bigger brush I'm just gonna make let most of it come off and I'm just gonna go over the model Cover it. And you know what? If you get a little bit on your on the troll zits, don't sweat it. This will do. This will just tone that contrast down a little bit. Unless you want contrast, then skip this step. So once he's dry, you'll have something that looks a little like that. 
Now if you'll notice, all that stark contrast has been basically blended in. He's a little darker blue than the first one I painted, but I kind of like him like this. So to make them pop, we'll go back in with the uh, the bone color, and I'm just gonna touch some of these zits up that got a little bit of blue on them. And we did the glaze. Just kind of bring that back out because that's a neat something that gives some good contrast the rest of the back. Touch up a couple spots. I got some blue on it. On this loincloth. Liking that. So what I'm going to do, what we'll do here, is I'm going to take some hex lynchin, and there's areas here where he's got, um, like veins, and we're going to just take and draw those veins in. Got some some veiny growths back here, some veiny spots on his uh, his back zit or whatever this thing is that's gigantic. I'm just going to use the purple to kind of outline it. It's kind of hard to see. Maybe I'll zoom in here a little bit. So I obliterated some of the detail on this one right here when I was taking that mold line out. So I'm just going to put it back in. Once we've done that, we got some veins on his back, on his arm. Put one up here to hide the uh, the mold line that I missed. So what we'll do is take that this Mephiston red. We're going to just very carefully go over top of the purple. And do the veins. Just in a couple spots. Now if you wanted, you could take a really strong blue color and make the veins blue if you wanted. Um, I just wanted something to kind of make them stick out a little different um, from all the blue that's on the skin. And it kind of makes the back look a little better, I think. 
So the trick to the eyes, um, we're going to go ahead and take the bone color that we've still got on our palette, and we're going to try to get in there and dot the eye that basically just put a little bit of white. I don't have to turn him. Put a little bit of white in there. If you got some white on the cheek, you can always go back in with your blue, touch him up. I'll go back in with my red. I'm just going to try to give him his red eyes. So that was, that's what we got so far. The other things you might do take some of the hammerfall khaki and just very carefully using the flat of your brush. Highlight some of the hair that's on top there, that way it kind of sticks out. Also got some belly here down here. A couple of spots that I want to, uh, you know, pop. You want the ears to stick out. Troll ears are deliciously beautiful. So maybe we want our troll to have red lips. So I'll take a little bit of the red, mix it in with the base color of the skin. I'm going to make little tiny lines. Just gonna paint that lip kind of a reddish hue. It's kind of a pink lipped troll and around the, the tip of the nose too. So, you know, I think I'm gonna call him done. Um, he looks like he just uh, woke up from a long winter's nap and uh, he's hungry. He's uh, a little different color than his, his brother here that I painted up as a model for this tutorial. So you can differentiate between the two. Yeah, I'm kind of digging it. And that's what you should go for, you know, go for what you like. And I'm liking what I got here so far. So, sweet. We're going to call it done. What we can do now is take him off of his base. Or take him off of the stand that I had him on. Make sure I get all that tacky stuff off of there. So one thing I always recommend you do after you're finished with your model is uh, hit it with... Uh, thing of dull coat. It's going to protect the finish. Uh, it's going to protect your work and uh, keep you from chipping and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll go ahead and mount him to the base. So you probably remember this is the base we made a couple videos back for this guy in particular. So um, I've got the holes already drilled there and uh, so what we're going to do is take a zap of gap of some kind 
I'm going to put a uh, dollop of Zappa Gap on the bottom of his feet. A little bit on the actual paper clips that we got there. And we're just going to slide him in. Getting pushed down into place. And let him set there to dry. But there, my friends, is your finished product. Not too shabby. I say so myself. So after many months of hibernating, Bob the Troll has emerged from his cave and um, he's ready to roam the countryside with his brother, whatever his name is, um, Ricky, and uh, terrorize the countryside in search of things to fill their bellies with because they've been sleeping all winter long. Whatever. Hey, it's done. And uh, I'm happy with the product and that's one of the important things. Um, I really enjoyed painting this model took me forever to do it. Aside from the issues with the mold lines, um, pretty nice sculpt. It's been around a long time. Um, I think Reaper, I think, I don't know how long it's been around. It's been around a while. So it's done and we're on to the next thing. Um, I think the next one we'll do is a Hobby 101 video. We're going to talk about paint selection. And then after that, somebody requested a swamp tutorial, um, swamp based tutorial. So we'll handle that, and then um, I'll get uh, some uh, Pathfinder ponds ramped up, and uh, we'll jump back into another tutorial. Thank you for watching. Um, appreciate all my subscribers. Um, still going to give away this Cthulhu Bones model, so um, I'm not sure what video I'll announce it on. But uh, that's coming fairly soon. And um, I got nothing. Thanks for watching. Uh, leave a comment in the comments field down below. Tell me what you like, what you don't like. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already, please. Um, watch my videos and click on the notifications button. So it's right next to the subscribe button on my channel or for the video. Um, just so you can get notifications when I actually make these things. Um, again, 2017, year of consistency, so um, stick with me and we'll just have a blast painting these Reaper bones. Uh, yeah, subscribe, comment, like it, and share it with your friends. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.